Hey everyone, it's Amy with Two Oaks Farmstead, and I have been promising to do a video and blog on um, companion planting and that kind of thing for a little bit, but we've just been, it's been kind of crazy around here, lots of projects going on and lots of seeds getting started and all of that. Everything will be up on the <laughs> sites very soon, but I wanted to go ahead and stop for a minute and um, talk to you real quick about companion planting. I get a lot of questions about it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start by saying that there are a lot of different ways to approach companion planting and various reasons why you would do so. Um, I am an organic gardener. I use zero chemicals in my garden, which means I, I don't have anything that I use to kill bugs, you know, or to push them away or whatever. Um, I don't have anything that I use to, you know, no miracle grow, nothing to make my plants um, grow bigger and, and what have you, not, not anything chemically anyhow. So I have to be a little bit more creative um, as far as the planting goes so that I can put combinations of plants together that will help each other. Now, how do they help each other? There's lots of different ways, actually. Um, some plants add certain things to the soil that you need or that other plants need. Now, we can always amend our soil, right? We can add things to help, you know, change the pH. We can add things to, you know, bring up the fertilization of the soil itself. Um, and that's something that you can reach in a lot of cases with companion planting. You may have to add, you know, a really good compost as well, which we do, but if you, if you look at the companion planting as another avenue to get where you want to go, then um, for me, companion planting is huge. Now, I've done this for years and years and years, and it's not something I would ever stray from. There's a lot of information out there. You know, you can Google or Pinterest or whatever, um, companion planning, and you will find so much information that it'll make your head swim. <laughs> but I, I say keep it to the basics. And what I always tell people, especially if you're, if you don't, maybe you haven't been gardening very long, or maybe you're just getting started, um, or, um, you would like to expand your gardening or what have you. I always say, start out, you don't have to start small. I'm one of those go big or go home people. I start big, <laughs> that's just what I do. But I know that I have to devote all my time there. And that's okay, this is my favorite spot. <laughs> but um, my, my, my theory is start out with just planting the basics that you know your family wants to eat. Now, I, in fact, um, I got a few extra seeds that I had ordered in the mail yesterday, and they always send me like a couple of different packages of free seeds as well, and it's just, you know, luck of the draw what you're going to get. And this year, again, I get another package of cabbage seeds. Well, we don't grow cabbage. My family will not eat it. I refuse to have it in my house and cook it because it stinks to high heavens, and um Cabbage tends to draw like awful bugs. <laughs> so I don't even want it here, especially since we don't eat it. But I have a friend who grows it, so I'm just going to barter. I'm going to trade out. <laughs> but anyway, that's just kind of a, just a, one of those things. Grow what you know that you want. I mean, we go through the tomatoes like you would not believe. Um, so I grow, I'm heavy on tomatoes. <laughs> so when I am planning my companion zones, um, tomatoes are always one of my main anchors on my list. Now, speaking of lists, I'm going to go ahead and say this. I could never pass myself off for so many reasons as a younger person, but for this one reason, for sure, I don't like technology. I'm just not a big fan. I like pen and paper, and I keep, in my garden, I keep this little handy-dandy notebook with me, and I like charts. I like, I put together charts for myself, knowing what I um, do how, and how I work, and it helps me keep things together. 
because I'm going to forget. Um, I mentioned on one of my last videos that, like with my seed starting, I've got my little chart that I made up that has what seeds and um, when I started on, when they germinate, when I transplant. I also have annotated in here which garden bed that they're going into. I'm going to get back into that here in a second. But in this little notebook, I also keep a companion planting chart. And I kind of highlight and circle the ones that I really like putting together, the ones that I personally have had really good luck with. Um, and I don't know if you can call it luck if it happens the same way every year. So I, I have experienced what companion planting can do, and I refuse to ever go back. But I'm going to mention something else real quick because it's another reason why companion planting is so, much, so important to me. I, um, you've heard of cro um, crop rotation. Everyone, you know, asks about crop rotation. Well, I don't have, my garden is not set up in such a way that I can just do a typical crop rotation. You know, there's a certain cycle, like a four-year cycle, that you, you move different kinds of plants to different spots, and, um, you know, this follows that, and that follows this. Well, I can't do that here because my beds are pretty set in stone. Everything I do is in raised beds, and um, I, I can't just switch it all around. It's not set up the right way for that. And that's okay for me because the companion planting that I do assists me in adding back to the soil what has been removed with you know certain plants. Now there are a couple that I, I try to move around. Broccoli, for instance. I don't plant it every year in the same spot because that is that can become an issue. But that's okay because having that one <laughs> plant that I just kind of find new spots for every year, that's okay with me. And I can work really hard on the soil making sure that it is up to par before and after the broccoli you know, goes in and comes out. And um, so that's just something that, to keep in mind because it's something that I keep in mind with all of this because I don't do the, comp the crop rotation. Now, when uh, several, several people have asked me recently, okay, what plants go together? Well, there are so many. I've got several, oh my gosh, 10 pages here of chart of what's supposed to go together and then what works against each other. And so there's, there's so much information out there. What I like to go off of is what has really worked for me. Um, and I'll tell you, on a, on a broad note, marigolds everywhere, all the way through your garden. Just throw them everywhere. You want, you want marigolds to be everywhere. Calendula is something that I grow. It's in the same family. It's, it's, um, as marigold, it's got the highest amount of resins in it, and it, I use that for a lot of the medicines that I make, salves and all of that, creams. So calendula is also everywhere, and it helps to ward off certain bugs. It helps to draw in others, and overall, it's great with tomatoes. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, you don't have to plant, you know, a row of tomatoes and a row of calendula, but those are the kind of things that you can kind of just throw everywhere around them. Um, with my tomatoes, um, now tomatoes and peppers can grow together. That they are actually really good companions. They don't hurt each other. Um, and depending on your space and where your sun is and all of that, you have to decide where you're going to put those things based on that. They're not going to hurt each other and um, they, so they can be planted together. Last year, I made the mistake, we, had the, we built the new hoop house last season, and I got everything planted in there, and I decided that's gonna be my tomato and pepper house. That's where I'm gonna put all those. And they grew like you would not believe, best ever. I've never seen tomato plants that big. However, because they got way bigger than I thought they were going to, they shaded my pepper plants, and so they were kind of scraggly. They were tall and skinny. They didn't bush out like a normal pepper plant does.
because they were trying to reach the sun. <laughs> so I'm going to, based on that, I will be readjusting this year um, and adjusting where they sit so that when the sun comes over, they've all got the right amount of sun. So it's always something that you have to pay attention to, how much sun um, or shade is that plant going to get. Herbs are fantastic to interplant with vegetables, certain herbs with certain vegetables. Basil and parsley are always with my um, tomatoes, every time. They're just all up and down. I'll just throw some seeds out here and there, and they really, really help your tomato plants grow. They, they will um, help them to taste better. You just You have a better tomato if you have basil and parsley right there with it. So that's one that I just always do. I don't even, I don't even check anymore. That's what I do. Um, so that, that's a huge one. Now then you go to other um, vegetables that you know, we like on our list, things that I definitely grow, and start looking at, okay, well, if I plant this particular main thing here, what do I need to plant with it to help it grow? Or you know, that's a great companion that you know, works together my cucumbers. Now we do cucumbers every year for um, pickles and what have you. And I, last year I set up a, um, we call it the cucumber arch. It's two raised beds, kind of deep raised beds that have um, hog panels in between or cattle panels or whatever in between in an arch so that my cucumbers can grow up over it and makes it cute and pretty and whatever. Well, there are certain things that you can plant with your cucumbers to um, help out. And I want to, I, I keep, you know, those charts that I was talking about. I keep, now, this is where I'm trying to learn the technology thing. And um, I got OneNote with the Microsoft stuff. And I'm, I was trying to teach it to myself. And I learned on my new computer that I can draw a chart. I can make up my charts. And that's what I've been doing. So I've got three pages of charts of my where all my garden beds are. They're all squished down. But I've numbered all the beds. And I start jotting in what I'm planting in each bed um, to keep myself on track. But also to help me. When I go, okay, what do what is it that I need to put with the cucumbers? I can look back at my chart and see what it says. Now, these are not hard and fast. It's not something that you have to plant cucumbers with this thing. It is just that these things can go together, and if your space allows, then it might really work for you. With my cukes, I can grow my beans and my peas. Now, I'm going to have two, um, two fences completely covered with um, black-eyed peas that vine up the, the trellis that I've got around there. And then I, the green beans that I like to grow are bush beans. They're Romano bush beans. And so they will actually, they're kind of short, and they'll sit in front of the black-eyed peas. Well, those two things can go together. But they can also go with cucumbers if you'd like to throw those in together. Um, chamomile, now we do a lot of herbs, and I tend to put chamomile kind of here and there. I love the way it looks, love the way it smells, and we harvest it for tea and also for some salves and stuff that I make. But chamomile works great in a cucumber bed at the base of it. Um, nasturtium, nasturtium is something that you just want to plant everywhere. That's another one of those kinds of plants. They, um, you can get the dwarf kind that are just really short and you just plant them, you know, interspersed. They go really great with cauliflower too, but they also have the vining ones. And I'm going to throw the vining ones up there so they can just grow up with the cucumbers and, and all of that. They're pretty. The leaf, I mean, the, the flowers are edible and they are really terrific to grow with your plants as a companion. Now, what do companions do? Um, companions will do things such as bringing in beneficial insects, bringing in your pollinators and that kind of thing. And they also help a, a lot of cases to ward off the bad bugs. Um, I've got wormwood 
planted at several spots kind of around my garden because critters don't like the smell of it. And um, so I'm like, well, let's plant some more. <laughs> um, I Things like that, I, I like to make sure that I've got plenty of. If it's something that's going to ward something off that's bad, I'll just put it everywhere. But there are certain plants that you can kind of grow um, just about anywhere because they don't hurt anything and nothing hurts them. Okra. You can just pick a spot for okra to grow as long as it's getting a decent amount of sun. Um, it can grow anywhere and it's not going to hurt any of the rest of your plants and nothing is going to hurt it because it's just kind of, eh, it's there. <laughs> um, there are certain um, plants, herbs, a lot of herbs that are great to grow with fruit trees. And um, tansy and comfrey are, are both um, excellent companions, honestly, basically around the garden. But if you plant tansy and comfrey at the base of your fruit trees, it will absolutely, you will be amazed at how well your fruit trees will do. And there's lots of reasons for all that. The comfrey has a big taproot that brings up nutrients out of the ground and right there to the, the root ball of the tree. Um, but there's, there's lots of reasons. There's lots of different things that they do. So you can research those things and decide if it's something that's good for you. But those two, I'm telling you, the base of your fruit trees, you definitely want those. There's others as well, lots of them, lots of options. Um, but that's something that, that's definitely something to consider. Um, I was trying to see here. We, okay, I have my strawberry beds. I have two beds that are full of strawberry plants. Um, and something that's great to grow with them onions. Now, I don't plant all my onions there. I plant my onions with my tomatoes. I, anything except for beans and peas. You're not supposed to put onions with beans and peas. But onions help strawberries, and so I usually put a few in my strawberry beds. Borage is a, an herb that is terrific to grow around your garden, but it's great to go with strawberries. It brings in lots of bees. Now, we have bees back here. And you know, uh, prior to last year, we didn't have our bees anymore, and we had a lot of problem bringing in pollinators. Um, I don't know what was going on in the area that year, but we were really having a lot of trouble. It didn't matter how many <laughs> flowers I had. But now that we've got our own bees, it kind of helps, and I like to plant things to... Um, to make them happy. I want to feed them. I want to keep them here <laughs> and so they aren't running off to the neighbors or something. But when you're looking at your companion planting, you can look at, and this is because there's so much other information out there, my suggestion really is make a list of your main crops, the, th the main things that you want to grow for your family. And just research what is great to go with those particular plants. Don't go through all the charts to have all the different companions for this and you know it's it can get a little overwhelming and can it can certainly make people just throw their hands up and say just give me some miracle grow. <laughs> um, that's not something that I'd be willing to do um, but if you start small and just start with your companions for the main crops that you want to grow then that's a great way to start getting into the companion planting. And then once you see the benefit that you can get from the companions, you won't want to go back. Seriously, it's, it's phenomenal what, um, what using the companions in the right way can really do for your garden. Now we have got all different kinds of things um, lined up to um, projects that I'm trying to get <laughs> um, going on right now. I just built a new keyhole garden that will be up very soon. Uh, my husband and I have been working on um, water collection around the greenhouse so that we can use rainwater to help us out in the gardens and um, well just so many more things. You'll have to kind of st um, stay tuned. I've got a hugelkultur bed going in back here that we've been chopping down trees and chopping them up and bringing them and stacking them in, you'll definitely have to watch that one. That one's going to be pretty cool. But you guys um, stick around. 
Um, be sure and subscribe and get the notifications so you never miss anything. We've got on our Two Oaks Farmstead YouTube channel, we've got um, a Life on the Farm and Two Oaks Farm Talk blogs. Kind of that's where that's where they collide there at the Two Oaks Farmstead YouTube channel. So don't miss any of that. And on the blog on Two Oaks Farm Talk, I will and when I put this up, I will absolutely have a pretty good list of some of the main companions. I'm not going to overwhelm anyone with a million different companions to think about, but the main crops that people use and their best companions to um, look at. So I'll have that up here very shortly, hopefully in the next couple of days. <laughs> so you guys um, have fun, get your hands dirty, and get some growing done.